Okay, guys, you know, I hope you appreciate this, but I coughed up, I coughed up $14. Actually, I used a coupon code, so I coughed up about $10 to subscribe to Benny Pepino's site, The Daily Wire, to watch this movie that they released. I guess they're calling it like a conservative values film called Run, Hide, Fight. And uh, if you watch this channel, uh, you you might know that I was very excited, very worked up, very foamed up to see a Benny Pepino cameo in this movie. I was hoping that maybe he'd get shoved in a locker or he'd be playing the debate teacher or maybe he, he himself would do some diehard crap in this movie. Sadly, I have to say there is zero Pepino up in this up in this mug. I mean, what kind of a celebrity producer or distributor of a movie doesn't demand a gruesome death scene cameo? I mean, come on. Come on, man. So I will be asking the Daily Wire for my money back. I will be like, "Hey, I'm I'm, I'm going to write them. I'm not even a conservative anymore because of what you what you done." By the way, this is how I signed up for their site. I signed up as Benny Pepino. Little little inside joke there. So I watched this whole movie, and I kind of watched it because I was like, ah, oh, this will be some funny content for, you know, the, the YouTube channel, and I'll kind of maybe, I don't know, goof on it or something. But I was actually surprised. There is some, there is some kind of deep, you might even call it an accidental self-own in this movie, but this movie is actually accidentally kind of deep. And uh, I'll just tease that out a little bit, but there's some there's some deep stuff going on in this movie. So we're gonna today we're gonna go into this kind of territory. Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! We're today we're going to go into the film, the film, the Benny Chapino film. Film. But first, I thought this was really interesting. Ben Shapiro does this thing where he he actually comes out. He did a video that he published on his channel where he basically explains that he's going to basically start like a propaganda, like a film propaganda outlet. He's going to start the Daily Wire Ministry of Media. So here's the question that we've been getting a lot from left, right, and center. Why are a bunch of folks who create podcasts and internet news releasing an action-packed thrill ride of a movie? Well, the answer is because we are in the middle of a culture war. Okay, The fact of the matter is that the culture is dominated by the left, all the cultural institutions. Basically, they're going to do movies, but it's all going to have the type of messaging that he wants. I can't wait to hear the music that they make. And he was kind of introducing it as like, well, here's our first entry into our Ministry of Media propaganda. It's run, hide, fight. And there was, I can't remember, it was an old director, some old director from, you know, whatever, the 40s or something, who he, in, in the beginning of one of the movies he made, if somebody knows, if somebody's like a true deep film nerd, Please tell me what, what movie this is, but it's an old movie where the director of the movie came out before the movie, like in the movie, he's filmed explaining why this movie is so important. <laughs> and actually in the 90s, uh, Steven Soderbergh, who directed whatever, uh, o the Oceans movies and and uh, all, all that stuff, um, he, he did a version of this that's really funny in a movie called Schizopolis. Ladies and gentlemen, young and old, this may seem an unusual procedure speaking to you before the picture begins, but we have an unusual subject. Turn. When I say that this is the most important motion picture you will ever attend, my motivation is not financial gain, but a firm belief that the delicate fabric that holds all of us together will be ripped apart unless every man, woman, and child in this country sees this film and pays full ticket price, not some bargain matinee cut rate deal. Turn. In the event that you find certain sequences or ideas confusing, please bear in mind that this is your fault, not ours. You will need to see the picture again and again until you understand everything. Turn. So I just want, I just thought that was funny that Pepino really wants you to know we're making some really important work here. Okay, so I sat through this whole movie and here's the, here's generally the plot of the movie. It's basically exactly what you expected if you looked at the trailer, but it's, there's some deep psychological stuff in here that's sprinkled in. 
But basically, it's about this girl. Her name is Zoe. It starts with her and her dad. Her dad is kind of like the exact type of guy embodied in an actor that like Benny Pepino like wants to be or imagines his audience is. Uh, hell. I was hoping we wouldn't have to deal with this scenario so early in our lessons. There's unfinished business you need to tend to. <laughs> well, it's tempting to let nature run its course. Lungs will fill with blood. The animal will die a natural death. But with that process comes extreme pain. It's like a very, you know, guy, a hunter. He's a hunter with his truck and his Second Amendment rights, and he's teaching his daughter Zoe how to hunt. And then quick, quickly we... We get into the meat of the movie, which is a bunch of school shooters take over the school. All right, listen up, and uh, well, you just might survive. Okay, we are in charge now, so please just do as we say, quickly and without question or else, well, you know. And Zoe decides she's gonna do diehard stuff on this. She starts uh, trying to save people. She's cr climbing through the vents. She basically, uh, she, <laughs> She does a very John McClane thing, uh, getting rid of a, a bomb that's strapped to a uh, a van. She looks like John McClane a lot in the movies. She like ties off her leg with a belt. She's like her her shirts are all soiled. She's all scratched up. She's going full Bruce Willis. She kills one of the school shooters. Uh, she like disarms some of them. She saves a bunch of kids, and. Finally, at the end, she kills, like, the main bad guy. <laughs> she, she does her version of throwing Hans Gruber off of the top of Nakatomi Plaza, which is just basically, like, sh <laughs> shooting a dude with a hunting rifle uh, in the woods. But this is not all that is going on in this film. Film. Jesus Christ. Please, 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 Jesus Christ. One of the things that... Actually, Slav, Slav Zizek talks about that I think is really interesting that I didn't get just on my own watching is he talks about two David Lynch movies, um, uh, Mulholland Drive and Lost Highway. And I totally I, I think he's right on this is that both of those movies are they're doing something really cool and really interesting, actually, which is they're they're using movies they're using the entire medium as like projections of fantasies so for example in the beginning of Mulholland Drive if you've ever seen this movie it's very weird the way that it's shot and the way that it looks it's really cheesy it seems like um like just like a really schlocky kind of Hollywood movie where everything's like a little too bright the sound is dubbed in a weird way that seems really cheesy it's so nice traveling with you. Thank you, Irene. I was so excited and nervous. It's sure great to have you to talk to. Remember, I'll be watching for you on the big screen. Okay, Irene. Won't that be the day? Good luck, Betty dear. Take care of yourself and be careful. And what's weird is that later in the movie, all that goes away. So it's it wasn't an accident. It was done intentionally. It, the movie's it's it's too bright. It's too cheery. It just seems like a a fake movie. And his interpretation of that was that this is the main character of that movie, Naomi Watts. She's playing herself. Naomi Watts. That's her. She's an actor in the movie, and that's her fantasy projection of what Hollywood is like. She only sees it through the lens of movies. Lost Highway and Mulholland Drive are two versions of the same film. What makes both films, especially Lost Highway, so interesting is how they posit the two dimensions, reality and fantasy, side by side. So he's showing with the way he's shooting and doing sound for the movie, he's showing how she thinks of how her fantasy works about being in Hollywood. And there's two weird things in this movie that almost seem like completely out of place. But if you think of this like fantasy projection version of movies, it totally makes sense. So there's two weird things in this movie that just seem 
they they don't have anything to do with the story. They could have been completely cut out. And one is that the main character, this girl right here, Zoe, is delusional. Literally. She she talks to a ghost embodiment of her dead mother. Aren't we getting close to seeing your prom? Mom. You have anyone in your sights? I mean it. Stop. Stop what? Um, just talking to a uh, fly. Yeah. And the second thing that is just seems too too drawn out like it, it was placed there intentionally almost but it's super super drawn out where there's this beginning scene with her dad where she feels like basically she can't take her dad's army jacket off take off my jacket you go out into the world without that jacket should be easy for you you're really not at war. And so I was thinking about this like projection, like movies as projections of fantasies watching this. And what I'm thinking, like what actually makes sense? And I think they did this by accident. This was an accident, accidental cell phone. But um, at the very end of the movie, the dad character, the, the you know, the Daily Wire conservative Second Amendment gun guy. He's a gun guy. There's a difference between like liking to shoot guns. Like I've shot guns before and it, a lot of people have and it's fun to shoot guns. But there's a difference between that and like being a gun guy. Like if you go to a shooting range, you'll run into some like gun guys. And her dad is a gun guy. So at the very end, there's this like kind of crescendo scene where her dad is in the back of a police car because he sniped one of the bad guys. And she's talking to him, and he reveals, he's like, I talked to the mom, too. Her mom would know just what to say right now, wouldn't she? Yes, she would. I guess that's why I still talk to her sometimes. Really? Yeah. It's creepy. I talked to our mom, too. In other words, symbolically, he's like, I'm delusional too. So this is my thesis on, on how, what is it? Run, hide, fight. This is how it works. Is that um, Zoe is not the main character. No, no, no. Zoe is not the main character. The main character is the gun guy, her dad. And all of this, the whole school shooting thing, her everything is him his fantasy projected the symbology of her wearing her dad's jacket is that that's how he sees himself as a helpless young teenager a, a helpless young teenage girl trapped in a school with a bunch of murderers trying to get trying to get him that's how he sees himself thus the jacket and this this feeling of helplessness is at the root of the psychology of the gun guy, which is, this is a very strong indictment on the fans of the Daily Wire because a lot of them are gun guys. And what they're basically saying in this movie is, look, this is all rooted in a sort of feeling of helplessness, of insecurity, of threats around every corner. So here, a, a gun is not a tool for shooting or hunting or self-protection even, but it, rather a symbol. But this is rather a symbol of power is a way to ease this sense of helplessness as projected in the character of Zoe, the helpless teenager. The other indictment that they make on the gun guy is the sort of ridiculous hero fantasy that he enacts at the very end of the movie, hiding under the van, <laughs> hiding under the van to get into position to save the day with sniper shooting. Where do you want us to stay? Copy, they just landed. Right over here. The other interesting thing about this is, you know, a lot of the criticism from the people who, you know, the critics who watch the movie were like, this is, this is tasteless. 
you know, this is ta- it's how why would you mix school shooting and die hard? This is a school shooting is a horrible subject. You know, this is a very sensitive topic. It's horrible people's kids getting killed and all this. How could who could be so tasteless as to mix a movie like Die Hard in this? And I think this is another stunning indictment of the gun guy, of the Daily Wire Ben Shapiro fan, is that this person also part of their delusional fantasy that's being projected in this movie has to do with only being able to see things through media lens, through the lens of action movies, through the lens of TV. So a very shocking indictment on his fans by Benny Pepino with this run-hide fight. My boy Marty Scorsese oh! talks about this a lot. If you ever watch interviews with him, he always talks about Hayes Code Hollywood when they kind of crack down and you weren't allowed to do anything in movies that people would sneak in sim- symbolically things that even made it worse because it let it let to the imagination all the sexualities and the in the violence and all this stuff they would sneak it in that way and i'm afraid that that's what run hide fight did it snuck in a burning a burning scorching indictment of of daily wire fans <laughs> that's another funny thing is that the um the Rotten Tomato score is a 14 by the critics and then a 98 from the audience, which I wouldn't put it past Papino's company to juice those ratings, hire a bunch of people in, you know, um, you know, Thailand or something to uh, to churn out positive ratings for this thing. I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past them. But uh, there you go. 